Well, hello, hello. What are we doing here? Is this a division video? Hmm. It's been a while. Last one I made was my striker video five, six months ago. However, whenever that was, pff, I forgot. It's been a really long time. Um, I guess I just took a break because for various reasons, dissatisfaction with the game, no motivation to make videos. Um, I mean, there's many reasons why I haven't made videos. I also changed programs, so every time I sat down to make one, it was just frustration setting in. I uh, had my clips and all that shit unorganized. Too many clips, completely just overwhelmed and inundated with peripheral stuff I had to do. I couldn't just, I didn't have it to where I could just sit down, here's a folder, import the clips, edit them down, put some music on it try and give some kind of insight, tips and tricks, whatever, within my videos, which is how I like to do things. Um, my my workflow was basically completely broken up. I am using DaVinci Resolve. I have a few times sat down, I just, I never completed my projects. I've actually got videos that I've finished, uploaded, but then a, a patch come out that kind of invalidated what I put in there, at least to some extent, and I simply will not put out videos that are not relevant to the current situation of the game unless of course it is clear and obvious hey this is an old gameplay enjoy it for the sake of it being gameplay just wasn't really you know i can't do that like i know some people are they just spamming content with with whatever they've experienced and that's fine like if that, that's you you do that but with me i've got standards and i either reach those standards or i do not do anything at all I refuse to put out subpar videos. I will not do it. And uh, as a result, my channel does pay. I've only got 10k. I should probably have a lot more than that if I had just sat down and went for mass produced content because that is what YouTube likes. In order to satisfy the algorithm, you need to upload at the very least two to three times a week, non-stop. You cannot stop. You stop, it is channel suicide. But hey, with Project Resolve on the horizon, I say on the horizon, it's coming in February. You could say that a little motivation has breathed its way back into me. And I am enjoying the finals, which is currently what I'm playing. I'm not really beyond Div. I've been on it a couple times, but meh, it's just not really that great to be honest at the moment. Not many of my friends are playing either. And uh, it's just a very um, meh experience. There are mostly good things coming on Project Resolve. Uh, lots of fundamental changes, which I'm going to love to get into and talk about and master, especially with the instant med kit. Uh, of course, there are five second rogue timers on normalized, which need to be spoken about. Uh, gear and build locking, which is an interesting take on basically fixing a lot of the bugs and glitches and exploits that are, you know, in the game because of taking a piece off and putting it back on, ignoring certain cooldowns, etc. Instead of the developers actually fixing each individual gear, because I bet when they were looking at this, they actually saw how many items are broken, whether it's shock holster, fire holster, creepy, death, vanguard. I guess the efficient is still part of that. Um, there are just so many things that... Um, some of which are good to the game, if I still think efficient is better for the game than it's not. I will always stand by that, but there are other things, other aspects to this which are bad for the game. And, um, you know, if I stick a, a fire sticky on a, on a player, Creeping Death is going to amplify all of the tier bonus damage from the skill. Which is why when you hit player 1, they tick for 200k on a maxed out build. But then the spread targets hit tick for 300k. It's amplifying the damage that you get from skill tiers on the skill sheet on the menu. And then if that player has has protection, they are going to reproc the fire frequently. Each time that it reprocs the fire, all you got to do is take off creeping death, put it back on, and it spreads again to every target that's near them. It spreads, you take it off, you put it back on. It's these kind of exploits that are ruining PvP. Now, the devs, I'm sure, are not going to fix Creeping Death amplifying status damage, but what they're taking uh, is a slightly different approach. A bit like how they fixed Wink Wink Corner Glitch before the actual fix that is coming in Project Resolve. 
by making the shield so weak that no one would want to run it just to retain the ability to corner glitch. Now that actually has been fixed in Project Resolve. Now if you have a scope in first person and you proc your shield, your perspective does not change. The reason that was working is the shield would offset your perspective to the right and the scope was simply designed to scope into your center. That's just how that mechanic was. Two completely separate mechanics in, in conjunction would lead to you being able to hide behind a wall and shoot around the corner, which is just broken. Now you still can do that to some extent with a regular corner peek that is standing back a few meters from a wall, um, but this is a, f a fundamental basic core mechanic. It is never going to be changed. The only thing I think the devs could do, and it may be applicable in PvP only, maybe, just maybe, is the red dot mechanic. For those of you who don't know, you are not it because it's a third person game. Your character is to the left of your screen, unless you shoulder swap. Your crosshair is in the middle of your screen. If you stand up right against a piece of cover and you aim, you cannot shoot. Yet if you take about four or five steps back, all of a sudden that little red dot that you can see there, boom, gone. Now you can shoot while, you know, concealing about 90% of your body. In fact, if you line it up just right, especially in certain cover positions where you sit in cover and then you aim, the mechanic completely ceases to exist. Or if the cover in front of you is a bit weird and not like a, a straight wall or a, or a sign or a tree, you do get some funny interactions where the thing disappears and it allows you to shoot, you know, exactly where your crosshair is and your body is completely concealed behind cover. I don't find this to be that much of an issue because it does require the user to line it up. And that does mean that they are susceptible to area of effect, you know, like stickies, grenades, um, and other such things. So it's not the end of the world, but I would like to see that mechanic given more range. For example, instead of it being four or five steps back, why not force the player to take 10 steps back from the wall to, to, to make that mechanic disappear? That way you would eliminate so many positions from being able to corner peek. Why? Because you would stand in that position, you would shoot your gun, but your bullets would hit the wall like they do on well-made PVP focused third person games. The Division 2 is a PvE centric game with a PvP option part of the game and dedicated but it's it's not a PvP game first and foremost. That is why this mechanic got into the game in the first place. It's why it hasn't been addressed until now at the very least with the corner glitch fix and with Heartland around the corner whenever that's going to drop. I've got intel that that mechanic has been addressed and I would like to see some changes brought back to Div 2 um, because especially with Division 3 coming in however many years I think Division 2 is in a place where they can use it as a bit of a testing ground and I would like to see the developers do this if they haven't already got it in mind to test some mechanics some changes that they may want to implement for Division 3. Now Avatar has just come out so it does mean that I, I mean I would I would imagine that developers from Division 2 sorry from Avatar are going to be moved on to Division 3 to start working on that game and then with Star Wars Outlaws whenever that comes out I don't think that's out yet For, correct me if I'm wrong I don't really follow the shit that closely there are other YouTubers who follow all the news but it's not me anyway um once that project is also complete I'm sure they've got some stuff, you know, support for the game as well, but I would imagine the bulk of those developers will then be freed to work on Division 3. But with Division 2 still being the, the main Division game, well, I still think that they need to use it as a testing ground to improve and get Division 3 to a point where they don't repeat mistakes from Division 1. Division 2 improved on many aspects of Division 1, but they also repeated a lot of the same mistakes and they undid the things that they learned towards the end of Division 1. And that is what I do not want to see in a future release. The dev team that we have now is not the same one that was there for Div 1. It ain't the same one that was there for Div 2. Sure, there might be some members, right? Some developers that were, but by and large, we have a completely new team. And this team, you know, it's been a bit of a rocky journey. They have done some good things. They've definitely cocked up a few times. But if this is the people we've got, and I hope that they stay, and I hope that the ones that have been brought back in 
are competent enough to look at the Division 1 and the Division 2, I guess Heartland 2 with, and the mobile game, and they just learn their mistakes. Because I do not, I, I simply do not want to see a repeat of issues that we've been dealing with for years. For example, we cannot have situations where traps are broken in the game for years. We cannot have a situation where something like corner glitch can exist for years. And right now, in you know, with Project Resolve, we're thinking, you know what? The devs are doing something good. This is this is great news. A couple of funny changes, but then they what go the and they fuck? introduce a named item, the new backpack that's in the dark zone right now with the winter, you know, projects thing, whatever that you could nade yourself or nade a, a, any skill and then two random players 20 meters away go boom i'm sorry but this is like creeping death on steroids uncounterable so. completely uncounterable you're just selected at random da -da 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 -da. bang you're dead <laughs> shit on <laughs> this is like every time that there are f steps taken to address issues it's like they find a way to take another step back and fuck everything up again i get it the backpack is cool the mechanic is cool but at the very least provide counterplay i've not even played the game to acquire this piece of gear but i have opted the dark zone a couple times got blown up a few times to like one hp because i don't tend to play that many squishy builds but the fact that someone could just walk out of a door, immune, throw a grenade on a on a, on a skill or, on a, or okay. on a player that isn't even yourself, and then you just randomly get assigned to blow up, I'm sorry, this is a stupid mechanic. At least with creeping death, you know, it's an 8 meter range, you can stay far enough away, but still not be too far away where you still have input in the fight, to not get hit by creeping death, and then... At least with, with, with fire, you have time to medkit, but boom, you just blow up and take damage. Like, this is just dumb, man. At the very least, the mechanic should be, and I suggest, if, a t if someone is hit with a concussion grenade, it spawns a grenade to, up to two targets within maybe a reduced range of 15 or 10 meters. In PvP, there should always be a more... Um, adequate number that is fair and balanced for PvP but still relevant and useful. Uh, maybe reduce 20 meters to 15 or 10 and have it spawn a grenade at their feet, giving you time to move out of that range rather than you just being assigned as the explosion area. At least provide counterplay. But hey, that does require a team that plays their own game, which I believe they have been doing at least somewhat recently for them to speak about pvp on the project resolve um podcast on the official channel um they have to have been looking at pvp and at least testing things to some extent i'm not saying they, they're sat there you know pvp in each other no no but they obviously had to do some level of testing which is why we are receiving some of the good changes that we are like corner glitch fix and a few others as well like the instant med gear, which is amazing by the way Really, really fantastic change. Definitely going to switch up the meta and the way that you make your build with regen coming. I'm looking forward to see uh, some you know, tankier options for solo players and with the status effect change. I still don't think all of them should go ahead. I think that a lot of these changes for Hazard are good, but all of them in conjunction just completely removes an aspect of the game, which I don't know whether it should. It's like, oh, I'm crying about crit damage for years, right? Even though I've already stopped. Um, Oh, crit damage is broken, man. It gives everyone 60% headshot ratio compared to a headshot build. Oh, yeah, we... Da, 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 da. And then them putting crit resistance. Have it be if you're in cover, you can't be crit. And then a oh, bunch of other changes to the point where, well, you've got this, this crit damage, which is great, but now it's completely fucking useless because there's too many counters. I think it's great to have counters. It's great to have good counters. But I don't think you should have so many counters that it completely removes an aspect of the game. Status is still part of the game. With all these changes, I don't think it will be. Is that too much? Please, let's talk about it down below in the comment section. And if you would like to join a wider conversation, I invite you to join the iSec V2 Discord. It's a Discord where I am quite active in, so if you'd like to talk to me um, in conversation, you know, feel free to just hit me up on there. We're going to have a public conversation, no problem. Um, Discord is primarily aimed at 
uh, utilizing the player tracking bot that Alexandroth has made. So shout out to him and his dedication to making a player tracker initially for tracking cheaters and making up for whatever the devs weren't doing in, re in regards to combating cheaters. You know, I did make that one video last year, um, you know, when Yannick was saying on the podcast, we are bad cheaters and... Well, we all knew on PC that was a crock of shit. I mean, complete bollocks, lied for his teeth. Yes, it's true, cheaters were being banned, but in what numbers? Which ones? I don't know. All of these cheaters could be banned if the dev simply looked at what Alex has done. He's developed an algorithm that, without a shadow of a doubt, bans all of these cheaters at the click of a button. Now, of course, you can't give that kind of power to an individual, a player of the game. You cannot do that. I understand. But it'll be nice the developers took his idea. I mean, you know what? Let's raise the threshold so we have absolutely no false positives and then just blanket ban everyone. Fuck them. Even if, if, if there is like one or two outliers, deal with it. But at the very least, you cleanse the game. All these bullshit accounts, right? All these cheaters, gone. Now, of course, then you have cheaters like CCCB Pazzo and the Cis clan who are only toggling here and there. They play normally, and then when they see a player they don't like, they toggle. Shoot you straight through the wall. These people don't have funny stats. They cannot be banned through automatic <laughs> systems like that. Because obviously they've bypassed the anti-cheat. The anti-cheat isn't detecting them shooting through the wall for some weird fucking reason. But at the very least, the dev team should be looking at clear and obvious video reports from the players, you know, shooting through a wall, and I know that there are some desinky situations with bad lag and deltas that can lead to some similar looking scenarios. But come on, there are so many videos of these guys cheating, spraying through the wall, and they are still playing the game. So you can't blame someone like Alex for dedicating time and having to make a system that at the very least allows the players to police themselves to some extent. He's fighting someone. Are they a little bit sus? No problem. DTH track this player. Okay, so... Oh, he's got 5,000 headshots an hour. Confirmed cheater. Because no one is getting 5,000 headshots an hour playing normally. There might be a couple of things you can do to get that. Maybe. But you'd have to do it 24-7. I'm not telling you exactly how. And no one's doing that, right? Point is, now that you can track players and find out who's cheating and who, or, or some of us you can send in the video to the community to this discord yo guys i ran into this guy he was shooting me through the wall upload the clip and we can as a community of experienced players can have a look and help the person understand whether the situation was just like really bad lag or whether the guy is sus and we should keep an eye on him whilst we're keeping an eye on him other people who encounter that player can report on their experience and be like, you know what, that guy was being a bit too funny, he was beaming a bit too far with that gun, with that build, killing a tiny bit too fast, and at some point, they'll just mess up. If a player is truly cheating, they will cock up at one point, will get the video evidence and it'll be uploaded to his profile, so next time somebody searches for him, he'll be labelled as a confirmed cheater, and then you can go and, well, you know, you know who you're finding a cheater, maybe it's time to leave the server and go find another one. So, while it doesn't solve the problem, it does help mitigate the problem. So I do urge you all to join this Discord for the sake of tracking players. And for those of you on console, well, there are obviously no cheats like this on there. But, you know, if you do have evidence of people using lag switch, which is quite easy to detect and you know, spot through video evidence, you can still have that uploaded to their profile. It's still fun to track your headshot. You have a sense of progression. It is really, really good. So, um, obviously it's not just for player tracking. Hmm. There are actually some other channels where the players can just talk and you can talk freely either in civil chat if you're having a good, you know, honest conversation or if things do get a bit toxic as they do in the dark zone, head over to Trash Talk and have it out. Nothing will be censored um, at all unless you are doxing people. That is the only restriction. So please, you know, if you are a PvP player or just any player, you have a place there where you can talk freely. And uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for the video. I've talked about a variety of things here. I kind of spoke off the top of my head as I usually do. And um, I do look forward to Project Resolve when that comes in the next PTS, which I will cover on Twitch and likely on some YouTube videos. 
Till then, in a bit, you man. Ciao, ciao.